In this video, we'll look at orthogonal projections of vectors onto one-dimensional subspaces. Let's look at an illustration. We're given vector x in two dimensions, and x can be represented as a linear combination of the basis vectors of R2. We also have a one-dimensional subspace U with a basis vector B. That means all vectors in U can be represented as lambda times B for some lambda. Now we're interested in finding a vector in U that is closest to x. Let's have a look at this. When I compute the length of the difference of all vectors in U and the vector x, I'm getting the graph on the right. It turns out that we can find the vector in U that is closest to x by an orthogonal projection of x onto U. That means the difference vector of x and its projection is orthogonal to U. Overall, we are looking for the orthogonal projection of x onto u, and we will denote this projection by pi u of x. The projection has two important properties. First, since pi u of x is in u, it follows that there exists a lambda in R such that pi u of x can be written as lambda times b, a multiple of the basis vector that spans u. Then lambda is the coordinate of the projection with respect to the basis b of the subspace u. The second property is that the difference vector of x and its projection onto u is orthogonal to u. That means it's orthogonal to the basis vector that spans u. So the second property is that the inner product between b and the difference between pi u of x and x is zero. So that's the orthogonality condition. These properties generally hold for any x in Rd and one-dimensional subspaces u. Now let's exploit these two properties to find pi u of x. I found the setting once more over here. We have a two-dimensional vector x. We have a one-dimensional subspace u, which is spanned by the vector b. And we're interested in finding the orthogonal projection of x onto u, which we call pi u of x. And we have two conditions for pi u of x. The first thing is that since pi u of x is an element of u, we can write it as a scaled version of the vector b. So there must be a lambda in R such that pi u of x is lambda times b. And the second condition is the orthogonality condition that the difference vector between x and pi u of x is orthogonal to, uh, to u, which means it's orthogonal to the spanning vector b. And now let's exploit these two properties to find pi u of x. So first, we start writing we use the, the condition that b and pi u of x minus x inner product is 0, which is equivalent to that the inner product with, of b and pi u of x minus the inner product of b and x is 0, where we exploit it now the, the linearity of the inner product. Now we're going to rewrite pi u of x as lambda times b. So this is equivalent to b times lambda b, or inner product with lambda b minus the inner product of b and x. That must be 0. Now we can move the lambda out again because of the linearity of the inner product, which is then lambda times the squared norm of b minus the inner product of b and x must be 0. And that is equivalent to lambda is the inner product of b with, its, uh, with x divided by the squared norm of b. So now we found lambda which is the coordinate of our projection with respect to the basis b. And that means that our projection using the second condition, sorry, first condition, 
is lambda times b, which is now the inner product of b with x divided by the square norm of b times b. If we choose the dot product as the inner product, we can rewrite this in a slightly different way. So we, we would get b transpose times x times b divided by the squared norm of b. So now, given that this one is a scalar, we can just move it over here. So this is equivalent then to saying b times b transpose divided by the square norm of b times x is our projected point. And if we look at this, this is a matrix, and this matrix is a projection matrix that projects any point in two dimensions onto the one-dimensional subspace. So now if we look at the special case of B having norm 1, then we get a much simpler result and we would get, so if, if the norm of B equals 1, then we will get that lambda is B transpose times x and pi u of x is B times B transpose times x. So we would get the coordinate of the projected point with respect to the basis B just by looking at the, the dot product of B with X. And the, the projection matrix is simply given by B times B transpose. Let me make a comment at the end. Our projection pi U of X is still a vector in RD. However, we no longer require D coordinates to represent it, but we only need a single one, which is the lambda. In this video, we discussed orthogonal projections of vectors onto one-dimensional subspaces. We arrived at the solution by making two observations. We must be able to represent the projected point using a multiple of the basis vector that spans the subspace. And the difference vector between the original vector and its projection is orthogonal to the subspace. In the next video, we will look at an example.